As we arrive at Big Bend National Park, several things start to sink in. First, this is one huge national park. It's so big that it has its own mountain range and its own border crossing. It's so huge that the drive from the entrance to our campground at Rio Grande Village takes nearly an hour. Second, we realize we're exhausted from the drive to get here. Texas is bigger than most countries. It's said that you can start a trip to LA from the eastern state line of Texas and when you get halfway there, you're still in Texas. It's no surprise that only one out of five Texans have ever been to their national park. Why? Because it takes a commitment. But the reward for making that commitment is huge too. We're Owen, Lynn, and Maggie of Van Trekking Lifestyle, and in part one of our visit to this hiker's paradise, we'll do our best to show you a small glimpse of what that reward is. But first, we need to settle into camp and rest just a little, because before long, Maggie's gonna let us know that there's water nearby. Not just any water, it's the Rio Grande. Maggie's never had water out of the Rio Grande, so I think she's saying she wants to do that. <laughs> oh, buddy. Does that feel good? Oh, buddy. <laughs> oh, buddy. Of course, he will. There he goes. Not a lot of dogs that can say they've been swimming in the Rio Grande, are there? No, but you have. I <laughs> know. I know. Shake it off. Shake it off, bud. But you know one of the most amazing sights to see here is to watch the sun set over Mexico while painting the mountain ranges to the east a purple and pink and beautiful color. This campground has the perfect trail to take you to the top of a small mountain to see this phenomenon firsthand. We couldn't pass it up. As the sun began to disappear in Mexico across the Rio Grande, the painting began. Pink, purple, yellow, colors you couldn't even imagine could be painted by a sunset. But there they were, right in front of us. We stayed until we could hardly see to walk home. And that night we fell asleep to the sounds of the coyotes singing their welcome song to us. As easy as it would be to just sit by the uh, campsite and just rest today, this is our day to explore here in the area. We're going to be in the National Park for six days, and we're staying at three different campgrounds. And the, actually, the National Park is kind of uh, categorized in three different areas. So today, since we're in the Rio Grande Village, we're going to concentrate on that area and do all the things that are in this area. Yeah, or we'll try to. There's try a to. lot to do. Yeah. And... This is a huge park for you to uh, drive from one end to the other just to do something. You're going to waste a lot of time. So we're going to go see what's here. And I don't know, we may end up in Mexico. We may end up in a hot tub. We may end up just hiking. Who knows? Who knows? For all of them. Not something you see every day.
So you're looking at all trails to see how we're doing. Yeah. And <laughs> we might have we're going on the on the six mile one. I don't know. Look at it. Okay. We're going straight up. We're going up straight up more. We're going away from the Rio Grande. Yeah. That's the Rio That's Grande it. out there. What we determined by looking at all trails, and Lynn was smart enough to download all the trails in the uh, park before we left our last location when we had Wi-Fi, and we're on the wrong trail. We want to go check out the hot springs, and this is the hot springs overlook trail, which uh, goes around the rim, and it's pretty awesome. Too late in the day and too hot for two old people to do that one, though, so we're going to head back and drive over to the other one and check that out. But this has been really cool so far. About 45 miles of hiking so far today. And 45 miles? I tend to exaggerate. Yes, you do. <laughs> you can't believe that one. No, heck no. Not for 12 miles. Wow. Very steep. Very steep. <laughs> we should have brought our walking stick. Well, we've made it back down off of the cliffs, heading back out to the van, and one of those daggum sign tried to tell us it was the wrong trail, but we kept thinking that, no, nah, it wasn't. The folks we met last night said there was 0.7 miles to the spring, and then the map says the same thing, but this one says six miles. We thought maybe you could just get there and then turn around and not have to do the whole or six get miles. get off of that trail and get the yeah. trail. Live and learn. It's a good thing we got multiple days here in this park. We'll figure it out before we leave. All right, we've uh, driven around the park a little bit. I found a little road that says the Hot Springs Historic Village. And by golly, it's a dirt road. We're Making gonna Daddy happy. Go explore a little bit. I think we're just the van. We're not really an RV, are we? Kind of both. It's a good thing we get to be an RV whenever it's convenient. But when it's not, we can just be a van. Try the Hot Springs Loop Trail, 1.4 miles. They were saying no, it's, just it's just you know, miles north 102 out here. This wouldn't feel really good if the water's 102. Is it supposed warm. to be 102? It's, it is. Definitely. Yeah. It feels great. Oh, <laughs> Couldn't walk all the way there and not get in no matter what. 
It is extremely warm. It feels like a hot tub without the bubbles is the best way to describe it. It's supposed to be healing waters that people would drive out from all over to get in in the early 1900s. Now that I'm soaking wet and have mud all over my rear end, we're going to walk back to the van. Pretty, pretty good day. Yep, time to go back to the van, go back to the campsite, maybe grill up some steaks tonight. Sounds like a good idea to me. Been out on the Blackstone Griddle. It's going to be a simple dinner. Uh, we've been really busy, so we're just going to do something pretty quick. We're marinating steaks inside, and uh, I'll put the recipe for how we do this in the description below. But. But it's the same as the uh, Asian steak bites. Okay. Okay. So I've already flipped them once. I'm going to flip them again in a few minutes. I'll take them off and let them rest. Then we've already cooked some uh, small potatoes. We're going to smash those down with butter and garlic, salt, salt and pepper, and then maybe a little Parmesan on top of that. And then it'll be time to eat. This should be interesting. We've never done this before. A bunch of them. There is a bunch of them, but I figure we can have them later. Oh, I know. Get it, that one. What are you going to try first? I think I'm going to try one of these potatoes. I, I told to you when you started dating me that it don't look like much, but... But it's going to be good. Mm. Smash potatoes mm. on the griddle. All right, let's try the steak here. Mm. Good? Mm. Mm -hmm. So you want some? We forgot to put the Parmesan on the potatoes. Oh, we well. Did. Oh, well. 78. Any temperature that starts with seven is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Y'all still there? Yeah. I want to do that, but Lynn doesn't. Happy wife. It would really make me nervous. Yeah. Plus, we were advised by two people that we shouldn't do it. Yeah. So in a van. All right. This van. Yeah. If we wasn't advised. Somebody said, yeah, 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 you can do that. I'd be okay. So my mistake, I asked somebody. I should have just done it. And then if it had gone bad, I could have said, honey, I didn't know it was that bad. But now, if I go do it and it ends up messing up the van, I don't have any way of saying, honey, I didn't know it was that bad. So there's another one here that's not quite as bad as that one that we're going to go on. And uh, even that road we were just on was uh, pretty close to the roughest road we've ever had our van on. The view definitely was the best view. Uh oh, we're coming through a tunnel. <laughs> you got to put both hands on the wheel. That's it. Isn't it beautiful? It's just amazing. That's what Maggie thinks too, isn't it? Yeah, she's having fun just hanging out the window, <laughs> looking around, smiling. Nine a.m. to four p.m. We don't have enough time to go today. This is what the Bahia's Crossing Port of Entry looks like. A cool little place. We're not in Mexico right now, but we're pretty close to it. And walking down to the uh, crossing. 
I need to use my passport to get back in. Let's see what this looks like. So I'm just walking down here to scout this out because this is really close to our campground and our campsite for tomorrow will be quite a ways away from here. So I'm thinking this is what we're going to end up doing tomorrow morning for our adventure before we check out of our campsite. But we'll see. So you know how they say when you go to Mexico, don't drink the water? <laughs> that might be a reason why right there. I think that's how they get the water for that town that we're going to visit. Uh, I might drink a beer or Coke or something. So now that I've left U.S. soil, I have to uh, use my passport here to get back in. Huh. Let's see how that works. Okay, they're very, very careful. Even though I didn't cross the river, it still took a while to get through that. And pretty interesting. <laughs> All right, let's go see how Lynn is doing and go back to the campsite. Vaquitas del Carmen. We couldn't figure out what we were going to cook for lunch today. So I thought, Mexican. But then I got to thinking, why don't we just go to Mexico and get some Mexican over there? That's what we're going to do. What do you think? It's really good. It is good. Very authentic, good. Yeah. Mm. It's really good. Awesome. We woke up on our second morning here at Rio Grande Village to winds gusting up to around 50 miles an hour, steady at 28 miles an hour. So what does that feel like when you're sleeping with wind blowing that much? Well, if you can tell from the video in here, it's early morning and you know what? Things are still rocking and last night, boy, it, it moved the van around quite a bit um, to the point that I thought about getting up and trying to point the the front of the van into the wind to try to reduce some of the rocking. Uh, had we known that was going to be happening, that's probably what we would have done. But the uh, the little thing we use, Zolio, that we use to uh, uh, to get attached to satellite information when we're out in the middle of nowhere like we are here, it doesn't give you an hour by hour gust uh, of wind prediction like it does if you're connected to the internet. It just says today the wind's going to be blowing 28 miles an hour, so we don't know if that means it's going to stop at 12 or if it's going to stop at midnight. So we'll go find some internet somewhere at the village store and get a little more information about what to expect today with today's weather before we start making plans because we need to switch campsites and move another hour uh, west. Nice and windy this morning. It's a windy, cool day to be filling up with water beside of a bathroom, but 
We got it done. Thanks for helping me do that. That, oh, that was a two-person job that time. Yeah. Uh, we tried to do it at the uh, dump station, but so many people have used that hose that they've uh, stripped the threads, so I couldn't get the the water hose to connect. And I've got a water bandit that I could have put on that, but we knew we could get water back in the campground. So. And there's several different spigots along the campground that you can stop yeah. and fill up at. So, so as we're leaving this campground, what would you advise folks about this campground? I would definitely stay in the outer loop if you're in a small uh, van or trailer. Especially if you don't want to use a generator. Right, uh, because there is a lot of people that use generators, especially in the um, wide open field over here. There's not any kind of protection or anything. And the ones on the outer loop actually have little uh, shelters over their picnic tables, so yeah, that's really, really nice cool. too. And so. it's a little more protected, so as the winds got up to 45 and 50 mile an hour gusts last night, being out here in this open field area, it was a challenge. Uh, back there, you may have had to worry about some limbs falling out of trees, but you would have been better protected. And you're up against the canyon wall, so it might be a little bit better there. Um, it's $16 a night to stay here with no hookups, mm -hmm. unless you've got the senior pass, and then that makes it eight. Uh, you can book 14 days at a time. You do need to be careful when you check in that you get the correct site. Yep, Don't because we didn't if, do that. That's right. <laughs> So we had to move last night. We stayed on the wrong site the first night, but um, nobody called us. I did an, I did an old man thing. It says in the reservation, Loop 7, Site 51. Well, all I saw was the 7, and I got on 7, and we spent the night there. And luckily, that first night, no one came in. But boy, that second night, this lady popped up and said, I think you've got my site. And sure enough, we did. So, yeah, But we moved. That uh, was okay. There are, there are three major uh, campgrounds in this uh, huge 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 national park and uh, all of them are a little different this one probably has the most amenities and it's probably the yeah. most popular um, there is also even a full hookup section associated with this at the village which is where we're headed now one more thing they do have Wi-Fi at the village store so you can walk down there and you know check your emails or check whatever you need to and they also have gas and diesel at this one which I don't think they have at the other stores it was 459 for diesel so it's yeah. not exactly cheap but it's not out of line for where we are in yeah. Texas anyway so okay we're gonna roll to the next spot now Grandpa D is always picking up the phone and talking to somebody like somebody's on the other end of it. But, you know, I never did really even see him dial the number. And we don't have any cell phone coverage out here. I'm just going to go back to see. Sometimes I don't know about my dad.